Hi, my name is Mercedes Smith, and today we're going to be discussing the Space Shuttle Challenger, what happened, and how NASA could have prevented it from happening. All of my sources are pulled from Wikipedia found in the assignment. Uh, so what happened is on January 28, 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger launched, and within 73 seconds, the two O-rings failed, and it crashed and killed all seven crew members aboard. It was super sad. And obviously, as I look more into the situation, I noticed there were many things that had passed safety checks that shouldn't have passed safety checks. And there were a lot of people who actually didn't report to their superiors about certain precautions that should have been, been taken. This is pulled directly from Wikipedia in the article. It says, Test data from as early as 1977 had revealed a potentially catastrophic flaw in the SRB's O-rings. Neither NASA nor the SRB manufacturer addressed or corrected the issue. NASA managers also disregarded warnings from engineers about the dangers of launching in cold temperatures and did not report these technical concerns to their superiors. Starting off, NASA could have done many things differently. One, if they feel like there's a problem in the actual design of the of a shuttle, why wouldn't you report that to your superiors? I feel like also... There wasn't enough testing done and testing situations, whether they tested it like in the warmer days when they launched into space, because obviously there's a very big temperature difference between launching from here and going into space. So that was one of the biggest things I found. And also what shocked me was these uh, O-rings were having problems from as early as 1977, which is nine years before and NASA completely ignored them. And so that gets us talking about Roger Boisjoli. I probably butchered his name. I apologize about that. But one of the questions asked, what should Roger have done differently? Personally, in my opinion, I think he did everything that he could. He stated his concerns for launching the ship. And also, he is seen as one of NASA's, big, NASA's biggest whistleblowers. And so, considering he is old and considering this was a job that he loved, if he was fired, it would be hard for him to find a job. And I think, personally, if I was in that situation, I would find it really hard for me to stand up and be like, we are not sending this space shuttle off. Like, yeah, he has no authority in the situation, so... He, I think he did what he was supposed to do, and he shouldn't take for fault what happened. I think the biggest thing is the manufacturers and engineers and realizing that this was their fault. They could have easily prevented it by doing tests. They could have looked into the O-rings and the failed history that they had had. I feel like it was blatantly ignored, and that was one of the biggest reasons they failed. And so... As a future engineering professional, if I were to ever go into engineering, I would realize the importance of double check, not only double checking your work because that's such an obvious example, but actually having it go through multiple people. So if I were in charge of the O-rings and NASA Space Shuttle Challenger, I wouldn't have been the only one and I would have passed it down to multiple other people to make sure that the testings are right. And then if we found as a group oh, this isn't going to work, I would take it to my superior or my authority and be like, if we send this off, these people are going to die. I don't know if that's exactly what Roger said, but who knows? He could have told them, hey, they're going to die or hey, this just isn't working and didn't really voice how dangerous it was. So that was a space shuttle challenger, a super sad story, but there are definitely some faults in NASA and hopefully they've overcome them and actually have better procedure and precaution for sending people into space.